Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Uh, you have to tell me because I don't see the list of the people. Send it to everybody. Okay. Okay, very good. Looks like uh, we can uh, start. So uh, the our topic today is elements and design principles of water supply system. So uh, the PDH is two hours. Uh, I'll be conducting that. So here are the the uh, outline for the for today's webinar. The water cycle, we'll discuss a little bit of water cycle because water cycle has some importance or need in the understanding of that in the design uh, of the water supply system and maybe uh, understanding the process, how the process works. Then the watershed will uh, define watershed and see how this can be related to, so this can be related to our water supply system and, and so on. Then we'll go real water supply system. We'll see their objectives, uh, why we need to do that, why we are doing that. Then the definitions of few terms that we use usually in there. Uh, then the elements of water supply systems. There are four elements, the basic elements that we need to uh, design in order to uh, like say, have a better supply system. The one is the source of supply collection system and the treatment system, distribution system. These are the four uh, elements that we need. Then finally, you will see planning of water supply system. So nothing can be done without any kind of plan or anything like that. So in this case, definitely we have to understand the planning stage, design stage, then uh, construction stage, as well as the implementation stage. Then we are in full blown uh, like water supply system. So one thing that I see here uh, looks like, uh, I can see the participant's name or sometimes when I'm displaying my screen, I don't see the um, like say chat box or anything like that. So I don't know whether I will see anybody asking any questions or not. I was wondering whether you guys can probably um, speak up. So if you can speak up, it would be great. I don't see the list of the people in there. Uh, I have to uh, like say, uh, click another screen. Oh, okay, they cannot talk, okay. So then time to time, I'll open the chat box and see how many questions I have. Because when I'm displaying my screen, I cannot keep the, the uh, chat box open. So in this case, it goes away. So when I'm, uh, changing my slide and other things okay okay very good the participants will be able to uh, define and describe water cycle and watershed so these are the two things they will be able to define then define public water system uh, what are the different types of public water system we use uh, by definition and what are the importance of them wholesale water wholesome water potable water palatable water these are the one kind of different terminology that we use in these scenarios. So describe the basic elements of water supply system and main sources of water supply. Elements, you guys know the four elements, right? So whenever I say describe, that means you have to say the name and just say a few words about those, right? That's the meaning of it. And main sources of supply, we'll discuss at least two sources, uh, surface water and groundwater, and maybe uh, rainwater a little bit, tertiary or third source, but not a viable one. Then interpret the water collection system, basics of water treatment and distribution system. So I'll go through a little bit of detail, not a whole detail, a little bit of detail on those things. Okay, so you guys can uh, take a look on those. Design the overhead storage tank. We'll see a little bit of theory of overhead storage tank, why we have overhead storage tank. And uh, from there, uh, we'll try to design a simple one for a, a certain amount of volume that we would like to keep in there. 
Then finally, we'll do the estimate of pressure at different parts in the distribution system using energy equations. So energy equation is a very important equation. We know that, right? So, so I'll, I'll show some example how to use the energy equation to find the pressure in different places. Oh, I don't know that I have the clap in here. Okay, so in the water cycle, in order to understand the water cycle, we know that about 97% of the water on the earth is salt water. Only 3% is a fresh water, right? Out of the 3% fresh water, 2% is frozen ice caps, and only 1% is usable that we are using, recycling back and forth, and we are using it. The usable 1% water is uh, used by organisms as liquid water or water vapor found in lakes, um, rivers, streams, ponds, in the groundwater and as vapor in the atmosphere, right? So water form and the vapor form, whatever the form we have, only 1% of the water in the whole world. Sorry, man, I don't know, I have this somehow set it up over there. Uh, so this is the water cycle. Uh, basically, it shows the uh, different parts of the water cycle, meaning the uh, water um, coming to the earth as a rain water and precipitation and other things, and it's radiating uh, back to the atmosphere and so on. And when it's coming to the upstream, it's going to the downstream, like I said, and uh, even if it's coming out from the groundwater in different ways, right? evapotranspiration, and other things like that. So this is basically a basic view of water cycle. So, sorry guys, let me see whether I can take those things off, okay. The six major process in the water cycle, and these are precipitation, surface runoff, filtration, and evaporation, transpiration, and condensation. Sorry guys, I need to go and probably just uh, change those a uh, little bit of animation. Sorry, sorry about that. I didn't know that I have this thing in there. Okay. I do apologize for that because it's, it will give us kind of hard time. I don't know whether I can take everything off from one slide or because I copied from slide to slide. So that's why it went there. Hopefully there will be no more sound. So. Okay, okay, very good. So. Okay, we were here, sorry about that. I do apologize again. Um, the, the six major uh, process in the water cycle, these are number one is precipitation. We mentioned that the water that uh, from the clouds fall to the earth's rain as a snow, hail, and slate, things like that. Surface run of the excess water, uh, when the rainfall uh, like falls into the ground surface, then part of it in, infiltrate to the groundwater and remaining uh, flows to the surface water, goes to the river and, and other things. Infiltration, the rainwater soaks into the ground. Once they uh, fall into the, the rainfall falls into the ground surface. Okay, then the evaporation liquid waste changes to gaseous state as a water vapor and goes 
into atmosphere, then transpiration or evapotranspiration of water that has been absorbed by plants will evaporate through the leaves as water vapor. So this is called transpiration or evapotranspiration. Condensation, water vapor is changed into a liquid water vapors, jo uh, joint dust particles to form the clouds and other things like that. So these are the six major uh, processes uh, that a water cycle has. Okay, the watershed, a watershed or we can call is a drainage basin, is an area uh, where the water uh, come from like say, uh, water when the rainfall falls around this area come to a certain place or discharge to a certain point okay so then this could be the the inner body of water or the, it could be a river or it could be lake it could be reservoir it could be wetland so this is the catchment basin or drainage basin or water set and these are the line is called the divides divides means the, the where the water falls if the rainfall falls over here then it will go to the other way not it's coming that way so that's the meaning of the the watershed. So we have to understand the watershed. The one reason to understand it because of uh, looks like if we are selecting a source, then definitely we have to know whether the watershed water uh, or the area the, uh, the water will be getting into this river or the source, whether it would be uh, good quality or not. If we know there are a lot of contaminants maybe coming from different sources for this watershed, then it may not be a good idea, or you may have to think different way. Maybe go for a groundwater and other things. So land uses, water treatment methods are the important maintaining water quality in the watershed. Then the sources, as I mentioned that, the point source uh, and the non-point pollution source, these are very important to understand. So, okay. Uh, sources of pollution usually fall into four main categories uh, that could be in a watershed could be polluted too. So industrial, residential, uh, commercial, and environmental. So some types of uh, pollution may include organic pollution. We know that organic pollution is could be BOD, COD, or, or some other uh, biological effects in there. Decomposition of living organism and their byproducts. Inorganic pollution, dissolved and suspended solids as sealed salts and minerals toxic pollution heavy metals uh, it should be metal not metals and other commercial um, other co commercial compound that are lethal to organism so this would be t let's see whether i can get a good color Okay, and then thermal pollution, waste heat from industrial and power generation processes. So this could be other types of pollution from there. I don't know, this system is very hard for me to understand. So. Why I cannot change the slide? What did I do? Okay. So something didn't work over there, probably I fixed it. And um, this is the one um, kind of like say, Safe Drinking Water Act shows like say, what are the different things we have to do to make sure that we meet the requirement of Safe Drinking Water Act? Meaning, uh, like say, the area that we are going the water from, that means the source, it has to be selected properly to meet the requirement of Safe Drinking Water Act, right? It's not really saying that, that you have to have water from here and there, but the way we manage those things, ultimately it will help us to meet the requirement of Safe Drinking Water Act. So it's mainly to uh, protect the America's public health and so on. This, this is basically showing a kind of ideal city, but always this is not the case, okay? So always this is not the case, but this can give us a little bit of idea how ideal it should look like in uh, real life, you can make something happen like that. So these are the storage tank looks like, these are the different houses, these are the river that's going through this. The sources would be very good in here. We have a dam over here, right? Reservoir maybe, they're storing some water over there. 
here and there. So this shows a little bit of how uh, beautiful it looks like if you can make something real ideal like that. So that will help us to meet the same drinking water act. Okay. Okay, the, the uh, broad objectives underlying uh, for the water supply system are uh, to supply safe and wholesome water to consumers, to supply water in adequate quantity, and um, like said, then personal and um, household cleanliness. Here is the definition of uh, water, wholesome water. Water which is unpolluted, free from toxic substances, as well as excessive amounts of mineral and organic matter, uh, that they may impair the water quality. So that's the wholesome water. And the other two definition, I'm not sure either I have those in here, uh, but one thing that I know that uh, we will have here is, so uh, I don't have it, but anyway, I can define those. The potable water means the water that is safe to drink. That means we don't have any contaminants or anything like or microorganism or pathogens mainly we can define it as a pathogens okay then palatable means it's pleasant to drink i mean it's clear it shows good uh, like clear view of this thing there is no suspended materials or anything like that it's not showing any color so these are kind of palatable water anyway here are some of the definition of the water supply system that we use uh, in this case okay so uh, the, the number one is the public water supply system, PWS. Provide water for human consumption through pipes or other constructed conveyances at, uh, to at least 15 services connection or serve at least uh, 15, 20, sorry, 15, 25 people at least for 60 days in a year. Okay, this is called public water supply system. So there are three different types of public water supply system. The one is called community water supply system. The, uh, the community water supply system means it supply water to the like, same people all uh, uh, year round. mean like a permanent uh, permanent city or like say permanent subdivisions of the houses. So these are the one community water supply system. So non-transient, non-community water system basically is a public water system that supply at least uh, uh, for 25 of the same people at least six months per year, but not year round. For instance, schools, hospitals, offices, factories, and, and uh, at that they have their own water system. Transient non-community water system is basically a public water system that supplies water in a uh, place such as gas station, campground, and other things uh, where people do not remain for a long period of time. So this is called non-transient community water system. So these are all public water supply systems. So, uh, EPA also classifies water system according to the number of people they serve, okay? So in the first one is very small water system, serve 25 to 500 people. And the other one, small water system, 500 to uh, 3,300. And medium is 3,300 to 10,000. Large uh, is uh, basically 10,000 to 100,000. And if it is more than 100,000, then it is called very large. Uh, the main idea of separating those, uh, like say classifying those, because they can have a different, uh, not similar regulation, but different reporting requirements. Reporting requirement means like so for very large people, they might say, okay, you have to take an hourly sample. Whereas the very smaller one, they might take, oh, you may have to take a, uh, maybe a sample every four hours, three hours. So, and, and report the data for maybe once a month. Whereas the other one, may say report the data to every every week. So main purpose of those things like that, why more stringent for the very large one? Meaning if something goes wrong over here, 100,000 people would be affected. And it would be very hard to supply water uh, with some other arrangement to 100,000 people uh, if we need to shut down the, the water supply system. But as the smaller one, if it is up to 500 people, yeah, if we can find it out, we can stop it and probably we can provide supply the water for 500 people very easily, right? So that's why uh, probably uh, more less stringent over there is, makes sense to some extent. Not in terms of the regulation, and I'm saying it could be uh, in terms of what is called the uh, reporting requirement and other requirements. There are some other differences too, uh, but these are the basic ones. 
Okay, then we'll go to elements of water supply system. The first step in the design of a water supply system is the determination of a quantity of water that will be requiring during the time whenever you need that. Next, a reliable source, definitely. Then if we know the source, we have to collect it. Then once we collect it, we have to do proper treatment to make it palatable and portable, palatable and safe or wholesome, whatever you can call it. Then we have to have a distribution system to supply water to the individual houses. So these are the four essential elements, source of supply, collection system, treatment system, and the distribution system. Okay, let's see whether I can see uh, what is called the, okay. Okay, looks like I'm checking the chat box since you guys cannot talk. So do you have any questions so far? You can type um, the question in there. Okay, very good. Uh, so I, we can continue. So these are the four elements I'm showing in a in a picture. So this is a surface uh, water source. I mean the surface water source. This is a river. Okay, so this is a river looks like, um, and the this we call it source. Then we have to have a something. Source is not just the river. Source is the whole thing like that. So if I would love to uh, draw something here, source is the whole thing. This is the whole thing is the source, right? So what does it mean? Uh, I think uh, like said, it could be like uh, the river and the intake system. Intake system we have to design for the river water. There are six or seven different types of intake system that we have to design. The main idea of designing those to make sure that intake that we put into the river is safe, right? It's not being damaged by some other River activities, maybe river um, uh, currents and, and the navigation board streamers and other things. They are not creating any issues or anything like that. So that's why one of the element. The second element is the collection system. Collection system is basically uh, includes all of those, right? So meaning we have to have a pump, then we have, have to have a suction main, then a pipe system that will come from the intake to here. Then we have to have a delivery main to bring the water to the treatment plant. Okay, so then if it is the treatment plan, so in this case, what is going to happen is uh, uh, we have to bring the water here, then we have to do the proper treatment, right? So in our topic, this topic, we don't have a whole detail about the treatment, but we have another topic, we do the water treatment there. So that would be uh, probably uh, explain everything over here, what we do. Then definitely once we have the water treatment done, we have the quality of the water to supply to individual houses, then we have to see the distribution system, send it to the distribution system. This is one of the distribution system showing with the reservoir tank. You see that this is the overhead storage tank, this is the overhead storage tank. These two are the overhead storage tank, okay? So that's what we have to have uh, in terms of like say a uh, distribution system. There are different distribution system, but this is one of the best one. Uh, it's expensive, but one of the best one. Then once we use the water, it becomes the wastewater and goes to somewhere here, ultimately it goes to the wastewater treatment plant, right? So wastewater uh, treatment plant ultimately goes there. Okay. Okay, very good. Um, so, oh man, I have to erase those. This is not a good system. So it should be staying with the slide, whatever the changes I do, but it doesn't. Okay, so the, the still we are under the elements of water supply system. Here, I would like to show one thing, the variation in water demand, how the, uh, like say, we use the water storage tank in here, in this picture that I'm showing here, okay? So the initially then we start at like say, after 12, midnight, right? Things like that. Still, we use the water consumption million liter per day. 
for the certain area and other things like that. So, and the average, this is the average line. This is the average line. This is the average line. So that means we have here, we are here in the demand, then goes up with the time because everybody is getting ready to go to the offices and other things. Then in here, you see the 10 looks like peaks, then goes down again, then in the evening it comes back and then at night goes down. So the way, if we know that our average demand is this, that means average uh, demand is this, then during the morning, if we are providing that much, uh, so, and this is our average providing, and this our demand is this. So this is amount of water air excess in this case, whenever we are pumping. So we can put this water into the tank. So whenever we need this water, so right here in this area, this is our supply line we are providing, this is our shortage, then we can bring this water from here to the shortage. Similar things over here, we are not bringing anything here. It's, it looks like little, uh, but we can also put this uh, water in there. Then from here is definitely, whatever we do, we will bring the water over here. And from here, again, we put the back to the tank. So that's the way, uh, we, like uh, it does two things. One is basically it helps us to uh, pump the water in the same rate. And the second one, it also is easy of the operation and it increases the life of the pumping system because we are not varying the speed of the pumping system and so on. So that's the another important part of it, why we do that way, uh, the supply of water, okay? So all water comes from precipitation uh, in the form of precipitation. We have seen that in the water cycle. Uh, it is evaporated from the ocean, condensed to the form clouds and final precipitation, we know that. The water falls into the form of rain. Okay, we already discussed that. When water hits the ground, a portion of its up excess, the surface water a portion sinks into the ground. Uh, this is the, the infiltration. So therefore, uh, the major sources of water supply is two types, surface water supply, and the other one is a groundwater supply. There is a minor one. I don't know that you guys can see it in, in my screen. It looks like it's minor source is the rainwater. So the minor source is the main water that I mentioned because it's very important to understand that certain areas, uh, we may have a lot of rainfall, 250, 300 inches per year. It's a lot of water, right? A lot of rainfall. Certain cases, the state that I live in, uh, I know that per year average rainfall is uh, 50, uh, or 50 inches per year. But in this case, it's not enough, right? So 50 to 60 or something. I don't think this is enough. So in this case, uh, like say, it's not good source to uh, select or maybe anything like that. But if you have a 300 inches per year, then definitely it could be a good source to do that. Yeah, you can do uh, use a lot of uh, rooftop uh, to collect the water and with small uh, treatment or the very simple treatment, uh, probably you can use the water to watering the lawn, wash the car, uh, watering the grasses, and, and maybe some cases using in the toilet maybe toilet flushing, so you don't need to use the, the supply water for toilet flushing. So yeah, these are the things we can do if the county city allows us to do certain cases, we have to get a permission to do that way also. Okay, the water running across the surface of the ground is designed surface water. So the surface water here, the surface water, uh, mainly thing, uh, coming from streams, rivers, lakes, ponds, reservoir, irrigation canals, and oceans. Since surface water is, is very likely to be polluted, it needs extensive treatment. Why it is very likely to be polluted? Because of uh, it, it uh, comes with a, a rainfall. The rainfall brings a lot of materials from the sur uh, earth surfaces, right? From the ground surfaces or anything like that. Or it wash out different uh, areas uh, pollution, like non-point sources from agricultural areas. It could be agricultural area, it could be parking lot. There can be a lot of hydrocarbon and anything like that. So a lot of uh, contamination might happen. So that's why surface water needs more intensive treatment compared to the, the groundwater because groundwater may not have, uh, already it's uh, screened out through the soil anyway. Okay, the surface water uh, which seeps into the groundwater is called the, uh, sorry, into the ground is called the groundwater of subsurface water. It travels through the surface layer of the earth. It picks up some minerals and a few organic pollution. The microorganism and particulate matter find themselves being filtered out of the upper layers. Yeah, some cases it happens. There's groundwater taken from the deep aquifers are free from microorganism and contain relatively low concentration of minerals and organic contaminants. So springs, wells, infiltration wells, infiltration galleries, 
uh, form the cheap, uh, cheap uh, groundwater supply. Since groundwater is unlikely to be polluted, it needs less or sometimes no treatment uh, before we can drink it. Some of the rural areas, uh, you guys have seen that uh, they don't do any treatment, they just consume it for everything. Only uh, places that I have seen, they do some kind of treatment when it has a lot of hardness in there. So a lot of hardness, hard water likes, if you're taking shower, probably you're not getting any foam or leather uh, in your soap with your soap because of the groundwater has a lot of hardness in there. So that's why uh, hard water, we have to make it uh, like soft water. I mean, we have to remove the hardness before we can use it. So this is the only treatment that I have seen some of the rural areas, uh, they have a tube well to bring the water for our, their drinking or other usage purpose uh, to do the treatment, mainly the uh, uh, hardness. Okay, then the next uh, topic comes, once we know the source, uh, how much quantity we need? So quantity, usually the way we design any, any water supply system, uh, usually 20, 25 years. So I mentioned here 20, 25 years, but some of the cases that I do the design project and other things, we do sometimes 40 years. Because 25 years is not uh, that much, 40, 50 is better. Uh, because nowadays there is another option, I think you guys do that too. So staging period, right? You can do the staging period. You can do the design, for 50 years, but you don't need to uh, probably construct everything in the, in the beginning uh, to reduce the, uh, like say, infrastructure cost, initial involvement of infrastructure cost. So you can do every 10 years or every 15 years. So there is a calculation you can do how we can do like basically staging period, either it is 15 years or 10 years. So this will give us an idea how we can do that. So in terms of the groundwater source, the quantity of water available is usually less than in case of the surface water source. It's always not the true, but it is true some cases because of the aquifer. If you have a deep aquifer, then it would be very hard to extract the water through the pumping system, uh, uh, drilling wells and, and things like that. So in this case, for a groundwater, a hydrologic study may be performed to find out the available groundwater to withdraw in an aquifer. A mud flow, there is a, a, pro, a uh, program we can call MartFlow, M-U-D-F-L-O-W, you might have used this thing. MartFlow can give us an idea if you know the aquifer and their permeability and other things like that data, they will give you some kind of information how much uh, water you can withdraw per year and so on. Uh, and, and that's how you know like, so whether you have enough water in there or you don't have enough water uh, in the aquifer, uh, at least in terms of the quantity. Then the, the other terms that's come is the quality. So we know quantity, if we have a quantity, do we have the quality of the water that we need? Uh, some cases very important because of, if the quality is not good, then uh, what is going to happen? Probably if we use this source still, then we have to have a lot of treatment and treatment costs money. And if it costs money to treat the water, then ultimately it will be passed on to the consumers. So the consumers will not be happy. That means the business, I uh, may be a good business. So these are all part of the consideration of the system design and other things like that. So impurities in the water, there comes in two forms. One is called suspended, other one is dissolved. Suspended, the material that can be uh, probably separated by physical process. Physical process, one of them could be sedimentation, just settling in the bottom. Other one could be filtration, right? So this is suspended. If it is colloidal, yeah, we can still do that, but we may have to do coagulation, flocculation a little bit and, and go from there. And the dissolved one, a lot of iron materials, minerals, they could be in dissolved form. Iron plus, chromium plus, maybe calcium, magnesium plus, those who give us kind of hardness of the water. So in this case, these are the dissolved form. Dissolved form, in order to treat the dissolved form, definitely we have to have a chemical process, chemical precipitation and other process like that in the treatment area. So we'll see a little bit of treatment for the surface water and groundwater, just a, a brief uh, description of that. So in this case, the surface water might have a lot of suspended materials, whereas groundwater might have a lot of dissolved materials. Uh, the way that uh, the process works, that's what uh, most uh, like reasonable to think. The suspended matter open contains the pathogenic materials, uh, pathogenic bacteria. As a result, surface water are not considered to be safe for drinking without the necessary treatment. So surface water, we never recommend to drink. Although um, it looks like in third world countries, a lot of people, they are drinking water directly from the river. 
They take the water from the river and, and do everything with this water at their home. Uh, still they are surviving because of uh, something their water doesn't have any any bacteria or, or a bacteria in there because of uh, the natural processes being uh, used in there. Uh, however, if it happens, then the, a lot of people will die, it's like a cholera. One time cholera was one of the epidemic, right? I think it's long time, in like 1940s around, uh, things like that. So at that time, a lot of people died because they used to use the surface water and surface water has a uh, cholera uh, virus or bacteria, whatever is in there, pathogens mainly there, and they died. So, so uh, groundwater are comparatively safer to and fit for drinking purpose without any kind of uh, treatment. But better to have a treatment, uh, at least the disinfection process, because you never know. There may be some contamination after you uh, extract the water from the groundwater. Okay, so then the, the uh, choice of supply, how we can choose one, either surface water or groundwater. If the surface water, if it is the river, lake, pond, and whatever we have surrounding areas, how we can uh, select that? Location is very important, location in terms of how much cost would be involved to get the water from this location to the treatment plant, right? So meaning if it is, uh, we are doing the piping system, if this piping system is five miles, 10 miles, 15 miles, or one mile, okay? So if a, uh, if we would like to bring, do you have any hill in between? So we have to uh, do a trance maybe, right? To bring that, or maybe to above that, uh, <laughs> above the hill and other things like that. There are a lot of considerations in there. Then quantity of water available. So we have to know how much water would be there in the source and quality and the last of all cost of the entire scheme. Meaning if it is a pipeline, how many, how long pipeline, what is the size of the pipeline? Then what are the different things? Is a right of way bringing with somebody else property or if you bring it through the road system, is it the road system could be like say too uh, far away. It means uh, if we bring it to the road system, then we may have to do a pipe system of uh, maybe 25 miles. Whereas if we can bring in the straight straight line, then probably only 10 miles maybe, right? So if this is the case, uh, then straight is better, but again, the right of way, acquisition of the land uh, and other things. So it would be a lot of consideration. So that's where the cost comes in there. The quantity of water available should be sufficient to cater for the needs of the community regarding domestic services, industrial demands, firefighting requirements, schools, hospitals, and other public usage. So these are the kind of basically uh, usage in a society. The quantity of water supply should also include the design requirement, which means the calculated quantity would be somewhat higher than the bare needs. Yeah, bare needs, uh, if we have a 100 million gallon per day, so probably we should shoot for 120 million gallon uh, per day, right? So that's why it's a little bit uh, different requirements. So the quantity of water available should be wholesome. Wholesome, you know, that there should be uh, exact amount of minerals and other things and should not be any toxic part of it. Safe, safe means uh, portable, right? Portable means uh, there is no um, organism or pathogens there that can kill people and free from pollutants of any kind or other way we can call it. A wholesome is basically defines a very close to a palatable, okay? So the health of public should be, uh, should in no way be endangered due to the epidemics as well with the waterborne diseases. So in this case, waterborne disease, uh, we can control that way. Uh, the quantity and quality of water are prime consideration in selection, selection of any source of supply. And the cost is definitely uh, first consideration but the, the uh, quantity and quality also are the kind of uh, important parameters to consider during the selection process. The water from source can be collected uh, uh, to the treatment plant by gravity flow or by pumping. So again, the gravity is not always we can desire because if we have any, so far I have seen only one gravity uh, like say system uh, in my lifetime. I have been going to a lot of uh, water treatment plant, waste water treatment plant, with my students to visit and I have a field trip for them. But I have seen so far only one in the current state that I have been living. Uh, and they have a good one. They don't need to have any kind of pumping system because their uh, river is a kind of the higher elevation of the area they are getting the water from. 
and their water treatment plant is, I think it is uh, almost uh, 100 feet or maybe 120 feet down. So it has enough pressure then to bring the water from there. Okay. So, okay, the cost would naturally be less for gravity flow, uh, obviously, because we don't need to uh, build the, the pumping system as well as the uh, other things. But the drain line, definitely pipeline has to be there. So we have to bring the water to make it kind of safe. We don't want to bring with the surface drain, right? <laughs> surface drain is gonna be good because a lot of people might trash something and there would be kind of pollution being put in there. So again, it'll be a distance and other things. Uh, okay, the cost should be reasonable and be repaid uh, at the end of the design period, which is usually 20 to 30 years. So with 20 to 30 years design period, uh, we have to recoup the cost, all the cost. After that, we have to make some profit. Otherwise, there is no uh, benefit. Even some of the company, the way they do it, then probably within a year or two, uh, then they would like to see the profit. Otherwise, uh, it will not make any sense to them in business sense of them. So collection system, next one is the collection system. So collection system, uh, I mean, in here that we mentioned, this is the collection system, right? The pump house, uh, suction main, and the delivery main. So these are the ones. So essential units of collection system are intake. So intake is one of them here, right? Uh, then the, the intake main means uh, the pipe system that is coming from intake to intake main, uh, aqueduct or transmission main, and the pumping station. So these are the ones. I have an explanation for each of them. The intake, uh, that is the, the uh, conduit or an arrangement that we put uh, into the uh, surface water for withdrawing the water. So this is called the intake. And the pipe system that uh, I think we have defined over here. So this structure, right? The structure that we place in the surface water source uh, to facilitate the withdrawal of water from the source and discharge into an intake conduit or pipe uh, is, is the main thing is the intake. And the whenever we put the pipe is called an intake main, right? So then the, the types of intake structure consist of intake towers, submerged intakes, intake pipes or conduits, movable intake, and the shore intakes. As I mentioned that there are different one, I think I have seen so far for five or seven, five, six, seven, something like that. So these are uh, very good to design, but we have to design because it has to be customized for different areas, different ways. So intake should be uh, so located and designed that the possibility of interference of with the, any supply is minimized to greatest possible extent, meaning any damage or, or anything from the, the uh, boating, uh, swimming and other activities in the water and other things like that. While uncertainty of continuous serviceability exists, intake should be duplicated. If we have two, then one can be serviced and the other can be still active. So that's why it's very important that we have two different um, intake in there, duplicate intake in there. So then the collection system, uh, collection system location of the best quality of the water available, we have to think that one. So these are the few factors that we have to consider for the collection system. Wide fluctuation of water levels, maybe it's not a good idea, right? So, uh, characteristics of intake surrounding. So yeah, whether it's, uh, it's if it is the river, if there's stable area or too much current in there. So there are permission of shoals and bars, then possible sources of pollution. If we select something that is downstream of a discharge, then it's not a good idea. Uh, it would be, and uh, if the more uh, discharge may be uh, allowed in the future, then it could be a problem too. And um, provision for excluding possible floating materials like logs and vegetation. Uh, that might uh, damage the, the uh, intake system inside the water. Okay, then the um, intake main and transmission main, uh, as we mentioned before, the pipeline from the source to the treatment plant section main in figure is known as the intake main or transmission main. The size of the pipeline is determined by volume order to be delivered and pressure or head of the water. Uh, basically in this case, uh, Q equal to area times velocity AV, right? So if we can have a velocity, certain velocity we need to provide uh, for certain Q, then we should be able to design the pipe size and other things. 
design of the pipeline is governed by the principles of engineering economics perhaps to a great extent than any other part of the water supply system yes engineering economics is very important because of so this driving our cost different cases even business point of view and other other technical point of view and things like that Pumping station. Pumping station is essential for pumping water from a low elevation to the high elevation, uh, where the gravity doesn't work. So, uh, in this course of pumping, we are not going to discuss more about the pumping uh, in this course. Okay. Before we go to the uh, treatment process, let's see whether we have any questions in there. So, I'm going to go to chat box. Okay. So no questions, looks like. If you have any questions, you can type in the box now and we can discuss. So far we covered, right? A little description of the uh, the elements of the uh, water supply system. Uh, I think I, I will come up, up to the collection system, then we have two more treatment and distribution system. Okay, our next one is the treatment plan. As we mentioned that the third element in the system is called the uh, treatment plan. So treatment is necessary to make the water portable or safe, whatever we call it, and the whole sum, maybe palatable, right? So that's why we need the treatment process. So uh, here I use the word palatable. Uh, palatable means pleasant to drink, pleasant to see, okay? It doesn't have any color or anything like no suspended material. In case of surface water treatment procedure, may involve the removal of turbidity, color, taste, odor, and bacteria. Yeah, definitely. There are maybe a few more things in there. The groundwater from wells may, be, uh, may need to be treated to reduce the hardness. I mentioned that the iron means another kind of uh, minerals in there, uh, corrosive qualities, and sometimes bacteria. Uh, not always, as I said, sometimes, depending on what layer you are getting the water from and how well the, the aquifer is being managed in uh, different ways or whether any leaks anywhere directly that can microorganism can go or bacteria can go or maybe what is called the, the um, uh, pathogens can go. The methods used to, for treatment include screening. Uh, screening means basically taking out the bigger part from there than sedimentation, uh, treatment with chemicals, uh, then with chemical treatment like coagulation, flocculation, Filtration, you guys know, uh, through sand beds and disinfection to kill uh, microorganism and other things like that. So disinfection is definitely the last one. Okay, then the distribution system. The distribution system is necessary to deliver water to the individual consumer in the required quantity and under satisfactory pressure. Whenever we say pressure means you guys understand the 50 to 60 PSI pressure is a kind of recommended for the houses. So if you have a 15 PSI in your house, then I don't think you like it, right? Or if you have 100 PSI, then everything would be kind of your pipe system and other thing may be damaged, those things like that. So our distribution system is often a major investment in there because we have seen that this is the one in here. This is the one, right? So it is a major investment, definitely. So it's a combination of various pipes that convey the water to the consumers, storage reservoir tanks that are provided to aid the distribution of water, pumps and necessary equipment, fire hydrants, balls, meters, and other appurtenances. So these are the one definitely is a part of distribution system. Okay, so in this case, this is the distribution system, right? This is, I'm showing it again, uh, repeating this picture, just to make sure that we understand that, okay? Then classification of distribution system, then there are a few uh, uh, classification. Gravity means directly uh, coming from uh, the higher elevation to the lower elevation, okay? That means we are not pumping. There is no pump involved, it's gravity. Then the second one is the system with uh, direct pumping. So I think most of the US cities, United States cities, they use this one, right? So they use this, this one. Anyway, the system with uh, pumping and storage, uh, some of the city counties they use that if you see a over storage tank in there for different citizens counties that means they are using the third one right uh, not for the whole area maybe maybe certain part of the area uh, they sort of okay gravity system is the easiest one 
Okay, gravity system is the easiest one. It, it is adopted where the source of supply as a lake or the impounding reservoir at a sufficient elevation with respect to the city to provide the, enough pressure in the air. This method evidently is the safest and the most reliable and more uh, cheapest also, could be cheapest. Safest, most reliable and cheapest because of a uh, lot of uh, energy involvements are not there. So this is the one shows uh, like say gravity system because if we have a reservoir, that means a uh, reservoir or anything like that water level is there, then definitely you can get the water in here. So this is the effective head and this is the total head, right? So head loss due to the friction. So if we know that this pipe, you know how to calculate the friction loss, right? So using Darcy Weisbeck equation, we'll see it in later on when we'll solve some problem using the energy equation and other things like that. So we should be able to see it in there. Now, I don't know whether you guys know it, but usually uh, what happens is like say for uh, P equal to gamma H, right? So if we know P equal to gamma H, uh, then if we need to provide the pressure, say for example, 50 PSI, say 50 PSI in there. So how much height we need? So how high it should be this one compared to that? So it comes out to be around this one is 115. So how I got it, like say it would be 50 uh, times 144 convert into PSF, 50 times 144, then divided by gamma, right? Gamma is what? Gamma is 62.4. So then it comes 115 feet. So this is 115 feet is without the loss part of it. That means this is showing the whole, uh, uh, I mean, just this thing, right? Just this. So if we consider the uh, this part of it, then definitely we may have to add few more feet in there. I would say another 10 to 15 feet, meaning in this case, 25 to um, 30, uh, 30 feet, right? 130 feet around that we need. Uh, so if we have elevation that one, that much, then yes, we should be able to use it as a distribution system. Okay, so um, then the uh, system with direct pumping, the method water is directly pumped to the individual houses, the mains and other things like that. So the, the, this is least desirable, why? The failure of power supply then break down the whole system. Pressure in the main vary with the consumption so that they, under varying consumption, several pumps may be required to conform to the supply adding to the cost. Yeah, so a lot of pumping in there. So I think I have a picture that one to show you. So this is the picture here, looks like this is a pump house. They are pumping water from there and providing the height, uh, this uh, pressure head by the pump, okay? So this is a loss, this is the effective one. So somebody here is getting the water, this is a direct pumping. And the other one I showed you the picture, right? See the, well, the we are pumping, putting the water back when, uh, back to the tank of our historic tank when we don't need it. Uh, and also we did the other way, we are bringing it back whenever we need it based on our uh, demand changes and if we know that our average demand or average supply that we may have. Okay, the system with pumping and storage is a dual system. This is called direct, indirect, and dual system. In this system, when the demand rates exceed, like uh, this is the explanation I'll already I did before. Reserve, uh, reserve condition exists, pumping rates exceed demand rate, the excess water is stored in the reservoir, right? I already explained one with the picture that I had in there before. So here is the one that's happening. This is the pump house. We are pumping it here, uh, as well as we pumping directly to here. So, and we are supplementing uh, something like that, uh, whenever we need more water that we are not uh, like pumping. So this is basically the dual system. Okay, the distribution system uh, method of supply, uh, also method of supply could be intermittent and the continuous. 
That's what we see most of the time here in the U.S. continuous. I have seen some of the intermittent supply that in certain uh, a few hours per year, the water supply will be there. So some of the disadvantages of intermittent supply are consumer are compared to store water whenever they don't, uh, they feel like the water will be gone in, in uh, a few minutes. And the other is unused water sometimes, they don't use the whole water during the off time. Then they trash it when the new water comes in, then what they do, uh, uh, definitely uh, they, um, what is called, uh, they restore the water, right? They trash the old water and restore the water. So this is kind of waste. Uh, it's uh, again, mentality issues and other things like that. Okay, disadvantage. Uh, the, in case of fire breaks, uh, breaks uh, during the non-supply hour, then it would be very dangerous for us. During non-supply hour, the pressure in the distribution system may fall below the atmospheric pressure and they create some vacuum. Means they can have a lot of uh, you know, air in there. So that means in this case is very harmful. Very, uh, vacuum can create a lot of uh, suction and other things. Ultimately, it can damage the pipe system and other things like that. So this is another bad part of it. So pressure requirement in the distribution uh, pipes is, uh, as I mentioned before, 50 to 60 PSI with a minimum of 20, maximum of 120. I don't think 120 is really necessary because 120 can give us very hard time. Uh, and AWWA recommends 75, okay? And fire and hose requires 8,200 PSI because they need a little bit bigger pressure to uh, take out uh, different areas and other things like that. Okay, distribution reservoir uh, means overhead storage tank are used to provide storage of treated water to meet the requirements of the consumer during high demand. And when the demand cannot be met by direct pumping and also provide fire storage and stabilize pressure in the distribution system. Okay, that sounds very good. And the reservoirs may be steel or concrete. They may be cylindrical, rectangular or square. Most of the time, the picture that I showed you is the cylindrical. So I'll design it also a cylindrical one, not the, um, the rectangular one, but you can use any, any, any shape because of this is basically, what is it? Um, arbitrary, right? Arbitrary uh, of the designers, so you can use it. But there are some advantage, disadvantage on those. The reservoir should be located as close to the center of use as possible for even distribution. Uh, the water level in the reservoir must be high enough to allow gravity flow at satisfactory pressure to the pipe system it serves. Okay, so here are the different types, RCC tank on RCC staging, steel tank on brick tower, uh, steel tank on steel staging, and pre-stressed steel tank on steel staging. So whatever works out. Right, accessories for in reservoir is uh, inlet outlet pipes fitting with valve mouth, overflow and washout pipes combined with valve control, ladder and manhole for cleaning and inspection, water level indicator, uh, I mean the way the water level is, I think there is a automatic system you guys can, uh, I think most of the time we do it from there, from floating point of view, how much <clears throat> water we have in there, whether we need to put more water there or not. <clears throat> and the ventilators and the lighting arrestors. And also I think there is a uh, overflow is already, I mentioned over here, the overflow thing is there. Okay, most econ economic dimension of the cylindrical reservoir. As I mentioned that the reservoir could be any size, uh, like say any shape, uh, cylindrical, rectangular, triangular, right? And other, other shapes of all. So we'll do the cylindrical one most widely used and it gives us a kind of better hydraulic uh, section also. So in this case, we'll design something most economic. The dimensions of a tank can be determined by applying the a basic simple principle of calculus, maximum, minimum. So since the tank is cylindrical, minimum surface area that will be required to hold the constant volume water by condition, uh, maximum, minimum will be the economic size. So in this case, surface area would be our main thing. There are two surface areas, one is the bottom, other one is the side, right? Circumference and the side. Top, I'm not going to use it because top is a kind of like, say it's not in contact of the water anyway, right? So we put some free boot and it just covers it. So it doesn't get the rainfall and pollute the water. 
So assume the floor thickness is equal to the wall thickness, then the uh, surface area of the uh, total surface area equal to A would be A1 plus A2, where A1 we can consider the base, right? A uh, consider the base and the A2 is the surface, uh, A is the total. So then that means total area A would be, surface would be pi R square, right? Or pi D square by four, but I have used pi R square here, okay? pi r square here and two pi r. Two pi is the circumference as uh, h, if I multiply with h, will give me the, yeah, the, the area. Circumference length is two pi r, then multiplied h will give me the area. Uh, so in this case, the, the V can be defined as pi r, r square h, uh, volume, okay? Pi r square into h is the volume. So then the h can be replaced by volume. Volume is a constant, V by pi r square. Then we can replace here, I had two parameter here, R and H. If I replace the H, this equation becomes only A is a function of R. Now we'll take the first derivative with respect to R, dA over dR. So we get something like that. Ultimately, this is the one, okay? This is the one. Now we'll put uh, like say dA over dR equal to zero. If we put D equal to zero, I equal R, we get R equal to H. That means the radius of the, the uh, cylindrical tank is, is equal to the height of the tank, okay? Or diameter is the double of the height. So that's why, hence the economic dimension for a cylindrical tank radius must be equal to the height. So that's what we'll be using. This is the basic principle. And it came from uh, mathematics like maximum minima and differential equation. I mean, the, the best hydraulic section could be another way to think about it and put mechanics point of view. Okay, so here is the problem that I would like to solve uh, for designing the overhead storage tank. So uh, we are requiring to calculate the economic dimension of a cylindrical tank for a capacity of 100,000 gallon. One cubic feet equal to 7.481 gallons. So calculate the economic dimension. And here what I did here, I convert the, the uh, gallon into cubic, excuse me, gallon into cubic feet. So what I had is 100,000 gallon, then uh, divided by 7.48 gallon equal to one cubic feet. I got 13,369, about uh, 69 uh, cubic feet. Now, we know that for economic dimension, right? For economic dimension here, uh, we have to use R equal to H. Now we know V equal to pi R square H, right? Pi R square H. So if we replace R equal to H or H equal to R, I did here R equal to H. So in this case, V equal to pi H to the power of A. So H equal to cube root of, of volume divided by pi. So in my cases, the volume was this much, and pi is 3.14159 to the power one third. So ultimately, I got 16.1 feet, meaning my height or radius is the same, right? Would be this. So my diameter has to be double. So it would be 32.41 feet. So my design would be uh, tank diameter is 32.41 feet and height is 16.21 uh, feet. So this is, I'll keep this uh, problem in a screen for a few seconds. So in the meantime, I will go back to the, the uh, chat box and see uh, we have any, any questions. <clears throat> Okay, looks like there is no question. We can um, move forward. Okay, uh, distribution pipe system. 
Okay, so that's what we are going to discuss right now. The basic requirement of distribution pipe systems are adequate strength and maximum corrosion resistance. So we need an up strength and it has to be non-corrosive and other things like that. Cast iron, concrete, asbestos, uh, uh, cement, PVC, uh, and GI galvanized iron are available in smaller size. While the steel, HDPE, and RCC reinforced concrete uh, cement concrete pipes are available in larger sizes. So these are the one looks like suitable for that. The pipe system comprises of four units, the main, supply main, sub main, uh, minor distributors, and the bulbs and appurtenances. We can call it appurtenances, bulbs and appurtenances. So this is the one typical uh, example that I'm showing here. In this typical example, the distribution system is called the dead end system so this is the main pipe coming in we call it main then there is a, a branches from here going a little bit smaller size it's called sub main and uh, some of the pipes like coming out of the sub main going uh, left to right or up or down things like that these are called the the uh, the kind of minor uh, distributors okay these are the kind of minor distributors these are the pipe system Okay, so anything else other than this and this, so rest of them are kind of minor distributors, uh, distribution system or distributors, things like that. Okay, the supply main or just the main is the direct conveyor of water from the pumping plant to uh, or the gravity conduit to the sub mains. Uh, it should be sufficient in size to carry the uh, flow whatever the flow you need the submains are secondary feeder connected to either side uh, may be placed at 1000 feet apart and should be sufficient size to discharge domestic supply and fire water things like that so the then the minor distributors are the branches coming out of from the sub uh, submain and things like that the fire services minimum diameter is six inch for that uh, usually domestic area certain cases we can use four inches or less Valves are needed to operate and control the pipe system. Uh, this should be sufficient in number and suitable, suitably located. So we don't have a lot of losses and other things due to those things in there. Layout of the distribution system. Uh, there are four different layouts of the distribution system. So one is called the dead end that I showed you in the picture three before. Then the second one is a grid iron system, circular room system, and the radial system. So dead end system, the figure three that I showed you already, this side are kind of open, dead end, right? The minor distributor run from the submain laid along the street and connect building and houses, houses in this case. So definitely the, the minor distributions are the one that, that connects to the housing with the houses and other things like that. I already showed that one in there in the figure three, right? Okay. Here are some of the advantage for that. This is one of the advantages is kind of uh, relatively cheap and diameter pipes are, uh, the diameter pipes are smaller and easy to determine discharge and pressure at any point in the system or re reconnection to the newer house in your location is, is easy for that is more uh, suitable. Uh, by suitably locating fewer valves, uh, water supply can be so regulated that by closing any valve, a section of the system can be cut out for various repairs without affecting the others. Uh, that's the main idea of those valves and other systems. But uh, in this case, definitely they have some advantage on that too. Okay, there are some disadvantages. Each pipe, each pipe has a dead end. So there is a uh, pollution in there. So there could be accumulation of pollution and some of the cases flow out thing. Due to dead ends, contamination of water may occur. Yeah. Large district is to be cut out when repairs have to be made in a main or sub main. Yeah, this is another uh, disadvantage looks like. The next one is the grid iron system. The grid iron system is looks like I have a main a little bit. A main goes from connect those the the sub mains. Then everything is sub main as well as it has a surrounding. Right, it's a, it's kind of looping. It's kind of looping. It's a closed loop. Other way we can say closed loop. 
If we don't close all the valves, that means the water can run from this side to this side, all the way back here, this side, this side, this side. It can run everywhere because it's a grid iron system, okay? So the main advantage of this thing would be um, avoidance of any stagnation due to circulating continually because it's circulating around because it's a, uh, it's a closed end but open to everywhere. Right, closed end. It's not a dead end uh, that way we saw it before. Uh, in case of fire, water is available all directions. So yeah, that's the definitely advantage. And disadvantage: absent of discontinuity of water supply, when anywhere in the system, in the event of any repair work, a main or submain has to be uh, shut off. So that's a disadvantage especially if the main needs to be uh, repaired. So in this case, if it needs to be repaired anywhere here, then you have to cut the water here, right? So that means everything will be stopped. Yeah. For the disadvantage looks like it requires provision of very large number of pulps at any junction of two roads four valves are required. So exact uh, calculation, separation, and diameter of the pipe is difficult. Uh, we can use different methodology to do that, right? So longer pipes require, hence it is expensive. So this is cost is another factor for that. In terms of the cost, this is, is uh, the cost is one of the disadvantages for the, for the grid iron uh, distribution system. Next one is circular or ring system. That means this by definition, it means like all the surrounding area has a main and all other submains are being fed from the main and throughout the circumference and other things like that. Okay, so these are the differences. Okay, so. Uh, let's see some advantage, disadvantage. This is a little bit of description of those circular and ring system. Uh, cutting edge, uh, cutting the entire district into circular, I think. Uh, but this can be a little bit, uh, is definitely better than dead end system. Makes the determination of cut, uh, discharge or size of the pipe easier. Water can be supplied to any point from at least two directions in here. The advantage very uh, point every point receives supply from two directions during breakdown water can be supplied from another other pipes in case of fire water is available from all directions design pipes is easy and disadvantage is large number of pipes are required so more length of the pipe This is the last one. Last one is the radial system. Radial system is a basically closed system, uh, but the only thing difference is, like I said, it runs the main from uh, source to the main, uh, other to main that goes to the the uh, reservoir or the tank or the storage tank. So these are the only main, and rest of them are uh, submains. Okay, rest of them submains. And one of the the advantage of those is. Uh, basically, a, a certain areas can get water from different sources. Uh, I mean, different directions. At more than two, the one that we saw before was two directions at least. But this one can be even more than that. So this is one of the advantage. So there are some of the the description of the entire district committee is divided into number of distribution zone. Then distribution reservoir is placed in the center of each, each zone. Right. The supply pipes are laid radially. Uh, away towards the uh, periphery. Then its advantages are collect, uh, calculation of pipe sizes is easy, quick service, disadvantage, there is no apparent disadvantage of this system. Means it's expensive, I should say that. It would be expensive because of the design and the pipe system putting together different way. Uh, it would be, it will not be cheaper. So it would be expensive, looks like. Okay.
So any questions, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and type into the windows uh, in the chat box. So I will go back to that again at some point, then try to answer from there. Okay, design of distribution system, how we can design it. In order to design it, we have to consider a few things. Uh, number one, type of flow, then whether intermittent or continuous. I think pipe design would be the same, but better to know it, like so what kind of distribution we have, uh, either continuous or intermittent. Then the method of distribution, uh, either by gravity or by uh, gravity and pumping, or just the pumping and other things like that. So whether by gravity or pumping, a uh, probable uh, future demand based on perspective increase in um, population, which also includes the industrial demand as well as the firefighting requirements. Uh, period to be considered to be the life of the period used, pipes used, uh, either 50 years, 40 years, or 30 years. That's what we have to consider some of the cases. Uh, the system should be designed anticipating the future for the condition that will obtain near the end of the time when amounts set aside for depreciation would have uh, returned the first cost. So these are the one. The flow formula used in the design is also another uh, factors to consider. Principle involved in the design is to assume the pipe, pipe size and then work it out, or you can do uh, assume the velocity. If you know the P, uh, Q value, you can design it from there too. So the peak flow in the pipes is taken as three times of the average daily flow. So most of the time uh, we supply as average flow, but the system has to be designed more than that. So peak, uh, if we need to supply water during the peak time, then we may have to have the, the capacity of the pipe system for that. So that's why the pipe size we have to design always for the, uh, the peak one. Okay. So the factors causing loss of pressure head include pipe size, rate of flow, friction. Usually losses due to the friction of the pipes are considered. And the, the other one are minor due to the band and contraction and uh, enlargement of the pipe system, connection of the pipe, valves in between, and, and so on. If we have anything like that, then I think uh, we should be able to calculate different things. The available pressure heads as calculated are checked up to see if they correspond to the permissible residential pressure heads. So that's what we are going to calculate in certain areas. If not, the pipe size is changed and the system is reinvestigated until satisfactory conditions are obtained. So it's a uh, way of designing the pipe. Uh, the back back calculation, if we consider the, the pressure first, then go back here and there, we can do that. Okay, so design procedure can be outlined as follows. Uh, prepare a contour plan, contour plan of the city at the town, locating uh, on it the pos positions of district and distribution zones uh, with their population, service reservoirs, pumping stations, main roads, streets, existing main lines, and other features. A small scale of say one is to 10,000 uh, may be used. Prepare detailed map of each district or distribution zone, showing in addition to the effort, effort set information for the particular district or distribution zone. Locate all the principal and minor streets. Yeah, it's very important because, uh, as I mentioned before, if you're bringing the water thing, can you do through the road or you have to uh, bring it like before that? Meaning somebody's house may have to be taken, right? If it is falling within the, the range of whatever we are trying to do, get the water supply line pipe in there. Okay, so the estimate the rate of demand. Uh, rate of demand means how much water we need. Uh, it's very easy to calculate. If I know uh, the population in the area, then I can multiply with a certain amount. Uh, like say, the water consumption nowadays is almost 104, 105 on average gallon per capita per day. That means 450 around, right? 450 liters per capita per day. So then if we know the average design, they multiply with the three, I can get the daily maximum demand. Assume pipe size, the velocity of the flow varies from three to four feet per second. 
So these are cringing, self cringing velocity and self uh, non scouring velocity, uh, things like that. Find loss of pressure head in the pipeline due to the friction. As in William formula, as it is available as nomogram can be used. Alternative friction law, friction flow formula can be used uh, indi uh, as indicated below. Darcy Weisberg equation, right? Good. So this is Darcy Weisberg equation. F is the friction law, uh, friction factor. L is the length of the pipe. D is the diameter. V is the flow velocity through the pipe. And G, you know, is acceleration due to gravity. So all of those things are here. This is the equation we'll be using to calculate the. Uh, head loss, right, total loss. Determine the available terminal pressure heads, uh, then starting from the res uh, res service reservoir of the pumping station where the total pressure head is known, the pressure head at the end of any line would be determined by allowing for the friction loss of head and any rise or fall due to the slope of the pipeline and in there. So that means whatever is saying there, it is kind of like say energy equation. So uh, it's a very linguistic way. In case of difference between the available terminal pressure head and the permissible pressure head, revise the assumed pipe size. Don't go more than whatever you need to do. It will cost you more and more because of the pipe size, materials, and construction, implementation, and maintenance, all of this. Frequently, it becomes necessary to analyze a given distribution system in order to determine through a quick and approximate check uh, the pressures and the flows available in any section of the system and to support, uh, uh, sorry, suggest ways to improve upon the same. If found adequate, then so that can be uh, like kind of improve in there. The following are the methods used to analyze the distribution system. One is equivalent pipe method, pipes in series, pipe in parallel, equivalent pipe method are used. So, and then the method of section, and the last one is hardy cross. So, Okay, the appurtenance in the distribution system, different uh, like say, ex auxiliary accessories that we might need in there. Swiss, uh, Swiss bulbs, also gate, uh, called gate bulb or stop bulb. Reflex bulb, also called check or non-return bulb. Then scour bulb, also called wash out or drain bulb. And uh, okay, and air relief bulb, pressure relief bulb, also called safety or blow off bulbs hydrants and the meters, hydrants and the meters. So here are some of the bulbs it's showing. The E is the sluice gate, a uh, sluice bulb. B is the reflex bulb. So sluice means you can probably turn it around and this can go up and turn off or it can flow this way. Okay, and B is the, the uh, reflex bulb, means the water uh, can be allowed to go this way, but it's not allowed that uh, going from this way to this way, right? So that's what it is. This is the bulbs that use the air relief bulb, means just open it, air relieves and goes this way and dissipate. This is a spring here. And this is the fire hydrant. The water is coming here, and this is the fire hydrant. This is the ground level, and this is the drain hole with plug and chain and other things, uh, things like that. And most of the time, we had a lot of stuff over here that we could use in there. So, then planning of water supply system. So in general, the, the following are the items that need to be done in the planning and order supply system. Estimation of the future population of the community and the study local conditions. So estimation, we do a lot of model, uh, population model, for population estimation model and other things like that. So it's not a hard job to do. Uh, we have a eight or diff, a nine different forms of uh, model that we can use. Location of reliable source of water of adequate quantity and quality. So these are the one is part of the planning process. Design of suitable intake. 
uh, collection system, a provision for necessary storage of water design, and works required to deliver the water from its source to the consumers, and things like that. So we have to have all of those. Determination of physical, chemical, biological characteristics of water, the water that you are getting from. So what do we have to do? We have to go to this uh, site, uh, grab some sample water, uh, water sample and take it under, under labs, then we design those things. Design of various units of treatment plants. In this case, treatment plants, if we have a complete project, yes, but water supply system basically uh, getting the water, uh, getting the water to uh, individual houses, right? Things like that. Design of distribution system to distribution reservoir, pumping station, elevator storage, layout, and location of fire hydrants. The fire hydrant usually, I don't know, it depends on the area and other things. I see some cases every 300 feet, every 400 feet. I don't know, is there any uh, minimum required? I think the different county cities they have their own code to do that. Okay, fire hydrant. Provision for the establishment of an organization which will maintain and operate the supply, distribution, treatment facilities, and the billing part of it. I think it's always under organization anyway because somebody has to build a business, supply it, and make money, okay, to run the business and other things. Or it could be owned by a county or city. As a part of the infrastructure, maybe. Okay, before we go to the problem solving, uh, let's go back and see whether we have any questions or anything like that. Okay, I don't see any questions. We have 30 more minutes. So I think we have a few more problems to solve. Then probably we can go and discuss a few more. I will take another 15 minutes or so. Uh, then from there, we'll uh, start a discussion and question and answer session. Hopefully at that time, you should be able to speak out on that. Okay, this is one of the problem that we'll be solving using the energy equation that I mentioned. So I'll keep this one into the screen for a minute or so, so you guys can read it and see uh, whether uh, you understand that. Then I'm going to read it again and explain it, and then we'll try to solve the problem. Okay, let us read this. Based on the layout of the water supply system, as shown in the figure, I mean, this is the figure, how much pressure in PSI will be available at the facet of the second floor of the residential building? So that means here, okay. Do you think that the pressure is enough for the building? Whenever I say enough means, is it within 50 to 60 PSI that we have seen before, right? Recommended pressure. So recommended pressure was 50 to 60 PSI. So in this case, definitely, is it there? Things like that. Okay, so uh, consider flow through the delivery pipe, Q equal to 2.5 CFS, cubic feet per second. So that means the flow rate that we need to supply into that is uh, from here to here is 2.5 cubic feet per second. The diameter of the pipe is four inches, right? Four inch starting from here to here, four inch. Ignore the minor pressure losses and use the following formula to calculate the major pressure loss. Okay, the major pressure loss. So minor would be here. We have a 90 degree bend over here. So there would be a minor here, right? 
So definitely there will be a minor over here. Okay. Uh, over here too. So this would be the minor, right? The major loss would be from here to starting from here. So the total head loss, total head loss is equal to uh, friction. This is for the friction and this is for uh, like say minor. Oh, sorry. So we are ignoring this one, okay? We are ignoring this. So in this case, uh, and the, the way that we do this one, this one is summation of uh, K, then, then V squared by 2G. So this is the formula we use for calculating the minor loss. And this is this equation. We use this equation to calculate that. Let's explain the term now here. The F is the friction factor. Uh, and L is the length of the pipe. In, in this problem will be like say, from here to here 100 feet, 100 feet plus 25, would be total 125 feet, right? For the L. Diameter would be uh, in feet, because this is in feet, it has to be in feet also. So four inch, four by 12. Four by 12 would be equal to what, one third, right? 0.33 uh, feet would be here. Then V would be the velocity of the flow. The velocity of the flow, since uh, we are not like changing the diameter of the pipe, velocity of the pipe over here. So at the V1, and here it'd be the V2, and both of them would be equal. So we can say V equal to V1 plus V2, sorry, equal to V1, equal to V2. So that means V equal to V1, equal to V2. So we can just consider one velocity, and we know G. This is the equation, I think I used it to show you how much height you need to come up with a pressure of 50 PSI. We come up with 115 without the loss, right? So we could consider the, the loss of the, the uh, friction loss calculated using the equation. Then definitely we should be able to go uh, from there. Uh, in this problem, the friction factor is given. So we don't need to find it. For example, if the F is not given, then we should be able to get it uh, from the Moody's diagram. So I, if I have a time, I'll show you how to use it. Okay, how to use it in there. Uh, like say, but if it is given or certain cases, even um, what is called the <clears throat> manufacturer give it to you, the pipe manufacturer, because they know their undulation and other things like that. So we need few things to do that. We'll, I'll show you later. I don't know, this system is not a good, it doesn't stay with this uh, slide. So I have to see what are the other way I can, I can do things like that. Oh. Okay, so here is the problem solution. I use Excel to solve the problem, so, but anyway, I'll show you the, I just list all the values that are given, okay? Q equal to 2.5 cubic feet per second. Diameter of the pipe is four inches, equal to 0.33 feet. P1 pressure at the, the source, so let's go back. Here it is 75 PSI. So we already know that means the pump that will create pump head. Uh, so if I know my pump head, how much head this will provide, then uh, like say I can create H times gamma will give me the PSI. So that means that's how I know it, right? Okay. Then the total length of the pipe, 100 is the horizontal, 25 is the vertical, total is 25. And the gamma of the water is 62.4 pound per cubic feet. Friction factor F equal to 0 0.01 is already given. Uh, if not given, find it using the Moody's diagram and G equal to 32.2 feet per second square. Okay, now here is the energy equation between point 0.1 and 2. Energy equation between 1 and 2. P1 over gamma plus V1 squared by 2Z 
2g plus z1 plus hp equal to p2 uh, over gamma v2 squared by 2g then z2 plus ht plus hl so in this problem let's see a little bit uh, if we can draw something here so between these two lines right i had here then going to the houses this is point one and this is point two so we'll put a datum line over here. This is my datum. Okay, so this is my datum. If this is the case, like say in here, let's explain the term. The P1 is the pressure at point one. Gamma is the unit weight of the water, you know that. Then V1 square, V, V1 is the velocity of here at point one, velocity of the flow. H1, Z1 is the elevation from a certain point. If I consider this one a datum, then this would be my z1 and the this one would be my z2 okay so that's the the uh, z1 and hp if i have a pump in between the two lines say for example here and here then i'll have uh, i know the how much pump head would be necessary or providing it pump provides the both the pressure in here increase the pressure pump that's the main purpose of the pump. We don't have any, right? So in between this, I don't see any in there. So then uh, P2 is the pressure at point two. That means that's what we are looking for. That's the problem was asking to do. And V2 is the velocity of the flow over here. And Z2 is the elevation from here to here. And HT is a turbine. Do we see any turbine between? Turbine means that takes the pressure or the water flow and creates the, the energy generate the energy. So this is the turbine. We don't have any turbine either there, right? So that means this is uh, cancel, cancel means this is zero. It's not a canceling out to each other. This is zero. Then HL. So HL definitely is there. Now we are going to calculate the HL. HL, since we are uh, minor losses are ignored. So HL would be HF that I showed you before. So F into L by dV square by 2G. F is given 0 0.01. L is 125 over 0.33D. Then multiplied over V square. V, how we calculate the V? V1 equal to V2 equal to V2 equal to V Q over A. Q is 2.5 feet per second. A is pi D square by four, okay? Or yeah, pi D square by four. This is pi, this is D square by four. I got 28.65. So that's what I put it in here, the velocity square uh, divided by 2G. So I got 70, uh, sorry, 48 feet almost, close to 48 feet of the fish loss, head loss, friction loss mainly. So then once I put this one into this equation, into this equation, so you see the other two terms already I cut it, right? Other two terms already I cut it, but still I may have it here, but it could be, uh, I have it here, but I can put zeros in there. So if I rearrange this equation for P2, that's what it becomes. Gamma, then P1 over gamma, V1 squared by 2G, V2 squared by 2, these are minus, okay? And this is a plus, this is minus. Since V1 equal to V2, they are canceling out. And this is also gone, this is also gone zero, right? This is zero, zero. And this one would be what? Uh, we have it already 10,800, 10,000, 800 right and z1 would be equal to what z1 in this case uh, z1 would be equal to zero if we consider the datum over here z1 equal to zero that means z1 equal to zero okay and this this one is basically uh, hp equal to zero right then negative v square is not there the negative z2 negative z2 is 25 because this was 25 right from here to here was 25 then minus uh, again this one ht uh, turbine head equal to zero then hl hl is the same as the hf so we get 47.49 so if i do the calculation i got uh, 62 57 58 psi almost and then 43.46 is the psi my pressure at the house in the second floor facet is 43 psi around so our, our uh, this one is kind of good calculation. Only thing is we missed the minor loss. Uh, minor loss could be another uh, maybe 
0.5 feet to one feet in added in here. So that means it will give me a little less pressure here because it's subtracting, right? So a little less pressure here. Okay, then the, I have a comment here. The, the facet uh, pressure at the second floor is less than the recommended pressure 50 to 60 PSI. So this is my answer. So that is the case. So I'll keep it in a screen for a minute or so. I don't have a lot of time, looks like. Okay, very good. So then let's move forward. This is my next problem. If the pressure at the building is not within the recommended range, that is true now in the example two, what should be the initial is just pressure at the pump to provide the recommended pressure of 56 PSI at the building. So it was 43, now we, are, we would like to provide 56 in the building. Show you detailed calculations, okay, in there. So here is the one. I, again, I used Excel to do it. Gamma is there. P1 is 75 in here, but in this case, uh, it's given to us. That means that means PSI, PSI. Already we know at P2, based on the arrangement, this 75, we get 43 PSI, uh, 50, 60 to 58 PSF into the facet. What we are looking for now, we would like to provide the pressure at uh, 56, not 43, okay? So then uh, Q is this. So what kind of additional pressure we uh, might need, right? Or a pump house or anything. So pressure required at the point one, 75 was there, but it was shortage, how much shortage was there? 56 minus 43. So ultimately uh, that much, right? We total we need 87 uh, PSI. So that means 12,606 PSI. So additional pressure here that we need, that means that just the differences, right? Differences means this, minus this. Ultimately, we can say this minus this is the same, right? So uh, then uh, we do the additional pressure uh, equal to uh, this 28.9, means 29 feet almost. Then we can use the power equation, gamma QH is the power, uh, 62.4, then 2.5, then H is this. So ultimately we got 45, 15 pound per feet per second, then one horsepower equal to 550 pound feet per second. So if you do the math, we get uh, 8.21 horsepower. So meaning 8.21 horsepower we need additional, okay? And total horsepower would be what? Uh, like say, if we do the calculation based on the total height, uh, total pressure, then definitely would be there. That means gamma into P gamma, okay? gamma P, P equal to the uh, gamma H. So PQ, I think, sorry, it would be PQ. So if we know the P pressure is uh, like 87.54 PSI, then multiply with Q in, then divide by 550, you should get uh, total horsepower. So 87.54 times 2.5, right? Into 144 divided by 62.4. So it's 505 times 2.5. Okay, whatever it comes out to be, right? Okay, so now we'll do one more problem here to uh, see the use of uh, Hazen William nomogram. 
Oh, okay. We used to use it before. Nowadays, uh, we don't use it because they are different ones. So find the total friction loss and velocity of flow in 200 millimeter diameter GI pipe discharging 20 liter per second, 20 liter per second in a total length of 300 meter using hazen William thermogram. So in this case, given Q equal to this, D equal to this, L equal to this, and the friction loss, let's use this. So I have this data, right? If I go back here, so that means I had a Q equal to two liter per second, then I had a diameter of the pipe 200 milliliters. So I got this two point, right? I got this two point, this point and this point. Then what I did, I had a scale, using the scale, I draw a straight line. Then I see it's hit it here, right? That means this is almost what, 3.5 meter per 100 meter, 1000 meters, sorry. Because it says loss of head per 1000 meter length of the pipe. Then I used this one here, looks like this is 0.63. So this 0.63 is a uh, velocity. So then I went back here, okay? I went back here and put the value 3.5 meter per 100 meter velocity equal to this. And I did the calculation since it is for 1000 meters, since my length of the pipe is 300 meters, uh, I multiplied with 300, I got 1.05 meter. So this is an SI unit, so uh, I got this. Now you guys can try another way. So do the same problem, like this problem, uh, with a friction loss of 0 0.01, a friction factor of 0 0.01, and see what it comes out to be. Uh, we could do probably one solve problem solving to compare like so which method is good either darcy weisbrick equation or the the hazen william hazen william is more conservative it gives you more values uh, more head loss uh, compared to the uh, darcy weisbrick equation i did several calculations on that and that's the one i found the nomogram is is shown in the next slide two points uh, Two points. One is 20 liter per second, first line, and 200. That means I explained whatever I explained over here. Okay. So. Okay. So it looks like I have another problem here to solve. This could be the last one. Looks like. So. I think yeah, I have a comparison here. Looks like. Okay, so find the total friction loss in 90 millimeter diameter GA pipe discharging 3.5 liter per second in a total length of 300 meter. Assume pipe roughness uh, epsilon is equal to this and, and temperature is this. Use the normal graph from the next slide uh, and use the head loss equation this. Uh, uh, use Moody's diagram to find the factor of F and, and so on. So I think we, we did it here. Let's see whether I can go back to that. Okay, so here is the Q is given, D equal to given, this plan, epsilon is given, velocity uh, from that one, uh, I use this uh, nomogram, looks like, let me see, do I have the nomogram? I think, I didn't show you here, okay. I didn't show you here uh, how I used it, but anyway, I got three uh, meter uh, total head loss, and like say velocity is this, right? Epsilon is given, now kinetic viscosity I got from the table because that's what we need. We have to calculate this one for the purpose of HF, right? For darcy weisbeck equation. L equal to 300 meter, D equal to 90 uh, millimeter means 0 0.09 meter. Uh, Q equal to 3.5 liter per second means uh, 0035 meter cube per second. Okay, then cross-sectional area, we found the cross-sectional area G equal to 9.81. Cross-sectional area is 0 0.0065 because we know the diameter, right? This is my diameter, so I calculated this, and Q equal to this, and V equal to Q over A. So Q is given, Q is 0 0.09, area is, uh, sorry, Q is um, uh, like 0 0.0035, area is this, so if I do that, I get a velocity of 0.55 meter per second. Now, using HF equal to this, uh, we have to calculate something else, this called Reynolds number, a video over new, so new, that's the reason I got the new here. So V D over new. Uh, so I got 49, 366. Epsilon by D equal to this. Epsilon is given here. D is also given here. So I got this. If it is in millimeter, then D have to be in millimeter. So I got 0 0.0022.
Now we can go back to, I have uh, 49,000, and here it is 0 0.0022. So if I go to uh, Hazen William, sorry, this diagram, let's see, I have a better one, 0 0.022, uh, right? Or 0, 0, 0, 0.0022, I think it's 0, 0, 0.0022, I can remember, 0, 0, 0.0022, and 49,000, right? 0, 0, 0.0022, so it would be somewhere around here, somewhere around here, and the, the other one is 49,000. So this is 10,000, right? This is 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, uh, 40, 50. So 49,000 would be somewhere around here. If I go this way, so if I go this way and I come up with uh, something like this, okay? So that means this line may go uh, this way, okay, this way. So that means in here somewhere, then if I go back here, I get 0 0.025 maybe. So F value. Let's see what I have in here, how I calculate it. So I got 0 0.027, okay? I, I probably, I said it because this is more accurate. So now head loss equal to put F equal to 0 0.027, then uh, 300 divided by this, L, L is 300 uh, meter. D is uh, basically D is 0 0.09 and V is equal to this, V squared by 2G, G equal to 9.81 here, I get 1.39. So you see this one looks like this is by darcy Weisbeck equation and this is by Hazen-William diagram, 3 and 1.49. The difference is almost 54%. Here it is 54% higher, okay? Here it is more conservative calculation, more wrong, right, in the sense of being wrong. So that's another way to uh, understand the two problem. I mean, which one is more important in this case and uh, and so on. Okay. Uh, the summary of the course, this course we defined and elaborated uh, on water cycle, water shared elements of water supply system, distribution system, effect on health and environment, as well as the planning and management of water supply system. We also solved a few problems to show the use of darcy Weisbeck equation, Hazel-Williams tomogram, and energy equation to estimate the head loss and pressure at the certain point in distribution system. So that's it uh, for that. And uh, I think this is the diagram. You can use it if you want to. This is Moody's diagram. Uh, this is Reynolds number. This is the friction factor. And this is the relative pipe roughness, x value over D and anything like that. I think the last one is the better one, yeah. Okay, now I'm opening it for the question and answer. So, okay, it looks like um, there may be some question or no, okay. So, yeah, I think it's from PDH source. Please take the quiz, your certificate of completion will be, okay. Uh, we have seven more minutes. We can hang around and uh, ask any questions or can you guys speak up maybe? Okay, you have to raise your hand to speak up. I can't see the hands or anything. Okay, let me see, I can go. Even I don't see the list of the participants there. Oh. Then I don't know whether anybody raised hands or Okay, guys, thank you. You guys can drop. I'll hang in in a few more minutes uh, if anybody has any questions. Okay. 
Okay, go ahead and speak if you want to speak. I can hear you maybe. Can you speak, Richard? No, I can hear you. How do we receive our PDH points? PDH points, okay. So I think um, uh, Hisham is there. Yes, so. you can go to the webinar page and it's uh, in the webinar page on our website. Yeah, it should be in the website, right? It should be in the website. So this would be two hours uh, live, so. Okay. <clears throat> 